what did the calculator say to pencil? You can count on me. Hi everyone, welcome to the next episode of our Q&A series. Uh, my name is Maciek, I'm one of the leaders of Enexocom's industry practice uh, and in this series of videos I'm presenting our point of view on some of the topics related to the comms industry APification. Today I'm going to tackle a follow-up question. As a service provider, what do I need to be able to deliver NAS? Let me try to explain that in brief. As we've established, NAS is a completely new way of consuming network services on demand and as a service. And since NAS is a paradigm shift, it brings a new set of requirements that service provider need to be able to meet. We did a brief summary of those requirements and we came up with major points. So let's take a quick look at them one by one in order to try to answer the main question for this episode of what kind of new capabilities need to be built to be able to fulfill those requirements. So the first requirement is around self-service ordering. Uh, and in order to be able to fulfill it, service providers frequently need to change the way they sell. They need to drop their manual processes that are heavily relying on direct salespeople engagement. And they need to define new sales processes that don't require human intervention and establish truly zero touch channels on the customer engagement front. You know, the one with self-service frontends or APIs, enabling customers to inquire about the possibility of delivering services, uh, instantly get quotation and place an order. The second and third requirements are related to the ability of delivering services real time and allowing for on-demand self-service configuration. And in order to be able to fulfill that, service providers need to have at least a baseline concept of software-defined networking capability, where you know the physical network infrastructure, cables, ports, uh, it's, it's all virtualized, and thanks to that, it can be controlled with the use of software layer, completely remotely and without human intervention. Uh, but software-defined network is not the only thing. Networks, you know, networks are frequently complex creatures combining multiple technologies from multiple vendors. And in order to make it easy for other people to interact with them, um, there needs to be a simple way to access them. So one of the capabilities, maybe not something critically required, but for sure, something that drastically simplifies the whole thing uh, is related to this zero-touch service orchestration uh, across uh, BSS OSS stack. Uh, so really having APIs that enable to provision and orchestrate services on top of those, uh, this software-defined layer. The next requirement of NAS is related to the fact that NAS services span across the entire comms industry digital ecosystem going far beyond a uh, single provider's own network footprint. So this requires establishing a capability that would allow for frictionless east-west automation with suppliers uh, and ecosystem partners. Furthermore, NAS services are assumed to have a consumption-based pricing models, just like cloud services. And frequently, these are not so simple things for telcos. And in order to be able to deliver such services, service providers need to have some capabilities around you know, real-time charging and usage-based billing. Uh, but also they need to have some flexibility in their product catalogs um, and ordering systems to allow processing such orders. And last but not least, NAS implies embedded security and quality of service guarantee. So it also requires to build capabilities around that. And that's not a trivial problem, actually. While there are several approaches to the security piece, uh, there is a significant challenge in the industry on how a single provider that provides like an end-to-end -end service containing several segments from multiple downstream partners 
can assure an end-to-end -end, uh, quality of service. In our view, these seven capabilities need to be considered when thinking about NAS roadmap. I hope you liked this brief explanation and uh, in one of the next episodes, I'd like to elaborate a little bit more on that. I wanted to introduce our reference architecture for NAS. Also, I wanted to announce that we're working on a longer written material, white paper about NAS, and we expect to have it published in the upcoming weeks. Uh, so if you'd like to get notified about that, I'd encourage you to join our newsletter uh, and subscribe to this channel. And if you'd like to learn more or get some help on your journey towards NAS, uh, I wanted to remind uh, that we're offering a free expert consultation services where you can meet one of our consulting experts and discuss your challenges or any questions you might have. Book it today through our website. Cheers!